Okay, well, this is James Morgan. <laughs> More again, not Morgan. <laughs> We're talking about um, preparation. It's the most important thing in painting. You need to have proper prep for the final product to turn out right. And let's say we're looking at these walls and we walk in and there's some damage here and there and we pull all the nails out and the screws and preparing to paint. Well, you always, I always start with a six inch mud knife and I'll do what you call knife in the wall. Run it over all the spots where the holes are. to knock off any little raised areas because well, usually when a nail goes in the wall it kind of raises around the nail because the the matter there has to go somewhere so it kind of bumps out around the nail well like see I don't know if you can see this but like this is sticking out right there you knife it and if it doesn't come off sometimes you gotta cut it off or knock it in with the butt of your, that's why this is always handy, the hammer end on this knife. Once you get, go around the room, I always do it every time before I spackle, because then you have nice surface. See, this is a nail pop. The nail holding the sheet rock has got loose and popped the mud and texture off there. So I knife it and I apply the spackle Speckle's always better than mud on small areas or little holes because a lot of times the mud isn't quite thick enough, which I might show you in a minute. But you speckle the spot, sand it, and then even here there's so much texture, I'm going to have to use a little spray texture to later to cover that up and so it blends in. All these holes are big enough that the, the mud isn't going to work properly, so I use this. It's called Dry Dex. It starts off pink and turns white, so you know, first of all, when everything's dry, because it's white. And it also has a lot of characteristics. It's kind of hard to do without two hands. See, there it is, pink. It has a lot of application characteristics that I enjoy much better than, like, crack shot or other kinds of spackle. Now, you don't want to get too much on the wall around, because you'll fill in all that texture, and then you'll have to make a much bigger... Uh, area with your spray texture. So I usually go like that, get almost all of it off, and then just leave it a little high where the hole is. Just so if it shrinks a little bit, it will still stay in the hole. Kind of like so. I leave like a ridge over where I know the hole is. I mean, you might not need to do that with this, but it's just a habit I've got into over the years. Helps make sure See, even this big hole, if you try to do that with drywall mud, it might crack out where the there's so much mud would be in that spot that it might crack. But this this dry dex is great. It, it'll just fill it right up and no problem. And so just go around doing that anywhere there's a spot. And then when you sand it, you have to really make sure you push down with like a, a sanding sponge and get down into the texture or it'll be a big flat spot in the wall. And uh, another thing about prep like this was a new door they added access attic because all they had was this old one where first of all they couldn't go through and then it was in the corner. And the, the highest part of the attic is right here. So they built this. Well, this was just all raw wood. And so I gave it a light sand just to scuff it up and then used oil primer on it. And the reason I use oil primer is because it's proper prepping for this application. Once I put the top coat on there, and probably end up doing a couple coats. At, but see, look, you got to caulk all this in, caulk right there, caulk in here, not in between the door in there, but in this frame the door jam and then after the since this is all dry then I would give it a light sand because when it dries it raises up any loose fibers in the wood and it gets rough again so you sand the primer wipe it off with a rag 
uh, maybe a damp cloth. Some people use paint thinner, but I hate paint thinner. So, And then some people use putty on these holes. After they prime, normally I fill them with spackles, sand them, and then prime. But that didn't end up happening here. So let's see, with the proper prep, this door is going to look great. It's going to turn out like the existing ones. Just beautiful. But if I did it, use some inferior product, this would come right. And people would be using it and accessing the door and get it scratched up everywhere. And, and it would just, the paint would fail. And it would be my fault. So, anyway, that's a couple tips. Keep your eye on maybe using your mind while you're doing this, not just going at it like someone that doesn't know what they're doing. And your product will turn out much better. Anyway, this is James signing out.